We've talked about the word congruent before, haven't we? Congruent. And so we talked about things that are like congruent segments, you know, congruent angles and things like that. Um, but today, we're going to talk about congruent triangles, all right? So what in the world makes a congruent triangle? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Okay, here's a triangle right here. Now watch what congruent means. Congruent, if I say congruent uh, segments, what am I talking about as far as the segments? They're what? They're, equal. They're exactly the same, aren't they? They're equal to each other, okay? Congruent angles are exactly the same, you know, in measurement, okay? They're equal to each other. It doesn't mean they're the same angle, but the measure of the angle is the same. Congruent triangles, anything that's exactly the same. Like uh, I always usually give this example talking about congruency. If I took a key and I went to Lowe's and I wanted to get a copy of my house key, all right, so we had an extra set or something, um, that key that I get is going to be exactly the same as the key that I gave them. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, all the little grooves, the size, everything. It's not going to be bigger. It's not going to be smaller. Uh, the shape is exactly the same because if it wasn't exactly the same, you wouldn't be able to fit it into the door. Would you agree? So anything that's congruent means it's exactly the same. I could take one thing, put it right on top of it, and it would match up exactly. So that's what we mean by congruent figures. Okay, You, you can have a lot of different figures that are congruent. Um, I'm just dealing with congruent triangles right now. You could have a crazy looking figure. Let's take a crazy figure. Here's a crazy figure. And um, let's just drop down here and put it right here. Now watch. That figure right there, and I just copied and pasted, and so I didn't change the size of it at all. So what's true about these two? They're congruent to each other, aren't they? What if I did this? What if I twisted it around? Are they still congruent? Yeah, they're still congruent. I didn't change the shape of it. I didn't change the size of it, did I? So the shape and the size, or the size and the shape, are exactly the same. Just because I twisted it around is no big deal. All right, does that make sense? But what if I did this? What if I shrunk it like that? Are they congruent now? No, they're not congruent. Okay, they are similar to each other. Very good. And we do have a chapter, almost a whole entire chapter, I think, on things that are similar. We'll do that later on. Okay, I went back. I just undid that and went back. What if I did this? Um, what if I just... Let, well, let's try this again. Oh, goodness. What am I doing? I don't know why it does that. Let's. Yeah, I know I framed it. And I don't know why. Let's get rid of that whole thing. Ah, I did it again. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, let's undo. There we go. All right, there we go. And let's... Group. I think it ungrouped. I don't know why. It does, every once in a while, I'll do something and it does that. And I don't know why. What if I did this though? Basically, I kind of kept it the same height, but it's a completely different shape now, isn't it? All right, it's a different shape. Um, so it's still not congruent, is it? So it has to be the same size and it has to be the same what shape. So let's take this triangle right here. I'm going to copy it. I just hit Control C for copy and then Control V for paste. If you don't believe me. And so, what do you think is true about these two triangles right here? They're congruent because they're exactly the same. All right? They're exactly the same. If I took this one, watch this. If I took this and moved it over and put it right on top of the other one, do you see it? And it fits, if I can get it right. It's pretty close, but it fits perfectly. Would you agree? All right, so that means they're con congruent to each other. Let's label these triangles. Let's talk about how we label congruent triangles. Make this a little thicker so that I can see it better. So let's call this one triangle ABC. And let's come over here, let's do a different color, and we'll call it DEF for lack of imagination. All right, so this is triangle DEF. So if we said they're congruent to each other, let's label this triangle. Over here, I'm going to label triangle ABC. How would I do that? Put a little triangle symbol. Remember, we did talk about that the other day? So there's triangle. And then again, what am I going to call this? I can call it ABC, I could call it BAC, CBA, CAB, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as it doesn't matter what order we put the letters in, it doesn't make any difference. Just for the sake of making this kind of easy, let's just call it ABC, is that all right? But I could have called it anything. Now, when we describe congruent triangles, though, it's very important that you put the other triangle in the same exact order. So if you look at this, all I did is copy and paste it. So tell me something about this angle and this angle. They're going to be exactly the same, right? Because remember, they sat right on top of each other, didn't they? All right. What must be true about this angle right here and this angle right here? Yes. 
Um, I got these paper towel things over there. You can take one of those. All right. What about C and F? What do you think might be true about them? And I'll put three arcs here and three arcs here. Everybody see what I'm doing? So those angles are equal to each other. But also, what else do you think is true? What do you think about this line segment AB? It's the same as what? DE. What about BC? Same as EF. And what about AC? Same as DF. Everybody see that? All right. So those things match up. We call those things. You see A, B, and D, E? You see A, C, and D, F, angle A and angle D? We call those things corresponding parts. Corresponding parts, because they're the ones that match up with each other. We used that word corresponding some other in the other chapter, didn't we? Parallel lines cut by transversal, corresponding angles are equal. Okay, we've used that before. It's a little different corresponding, but kind of the same idea. They're the ones that match up. If I took this triangle and put it right on top of this other triangle, which ones would match up? They're the ones that are corresponding parts. Do you agree? So how many corresponding do it, parts do I have all together? I need Aaron Ray for an early dismissal, please. Okay. Thanks. All right, so if I took this and put it right on top of here, how many corresponding parts do we have? Well, we got, there's one pair, right? How many pairs of corresponding parts do we have? We got one, we got two, we got three. So the three sides, right, and the what? Three the three angles. Okay, so we have uh, six pair. Is it pair or pairs? I guess it would be pairs, right, yeah. if you have six of them. Six pairs of corresponding parts. We could list them if we wanted to, but I've got them already marked on the picture. That's good enough. You okay with that? I could say angle A is what? Equal to angle D. Angle B is what? equal to angle E, C and F are equal, and do the same thing with the sides. I don't think I need to do that, do I? You see it in the picture. But all that to say this, when we describe the triangles about being congruent to each other, do you remember when I said line segments can be congruent or I can say equal, and I never had a problem with saying that they're equal to each other? Do you remember that? Um, with triangles, though, it's a different story. I would never say that one triangle is equal to another triangle. I always say that one triangle would be what? congruent to another triangle, all right? So I'm, I am pretty picky about that. With segments and angles and things like that, I'm not that picky. You could say equals. But for triangles, though, I would definitely say congruent. So um, just because a, a triangle is not really like a length of something. It's not really the measure of something. So if I said, you know, angle one is equal to angle two, right, if they were both 30 degrees, I'd be okay with saying that because it's a measure of something. Technically, some teachers would say this. They would say, you wouldn't say equals unless you put the word measure in front of it. The measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. It's, it's subtle, subtle little differences. Some teachers have a big problem with the subtleties, some don't really care, and I'm kind of one of those that don't really care that much. But with triangles, we're not really talking about the measure of the triangle. You can't really describe it that way. But um, So we just say always say congruent. All right. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle. Now watch what's got to happen. This is really important. Hope you're staying awake. The triangles, that are the corresponding parts have to match up. So if I call this triangle ABC, I have to call this triangle, what do you think? What matches up with the A? the D. So I have to call this one D, then B is the one with two, so E, right? And then this is C, so I'd have to call this one what? F. So I will be picky about that. I will be very picky about it because this tells you a lot of information. This thing right here tells you everything that the two pictures tell you. They tell you that angle A is equal to what? Angle D. So as long as I write it in the correct order, Okay, all those things will, are corresponding. So A and D are corresponding to each other, so they're equal to each other. Angle B and angle E must be what? Equal to each They're corresponding, so they're, they're what? The measure are what? Are the same. They're equal to each other. What about angle C and angle F? What are they? They're equal to each other. Do you see it? So without even seeing that picture at all, look, I can scooch this up out of the way. Without even seeing that picture whatsoever, just looking at this, I can tell you stuff. I can say that angle A equals angle D. Let's list them. Angle what? B equals angle what? E. Angle C has got to equal what? Angle F. All right, so as long as I'm sure that I put these in the correct order, that they're all corresponding, I can just look at this little statement and tell you these things about this, these angles. What else could I tell you? I could tell you something about the line segments too, couldn't I? Yeah, so I could say that line segment AB 
or the measure of line segment AB is equal to what over here? DE, you follow me? Without even looking at the triangles, I could tell you that AB and DE were equal to each other. What else could I tell you? Okay, BC, all right, we'll go BC is equal to EF. What else could I say? AC is equal to what? DF, all right? Look, I know all that stuff just by looking at that little, um, we call it a uh, congruency statement, I think is what they call it, I think. Yeah, it is. It's called a congruence statement is what the book says. All right, this is a congruence statement. Just from this statement, I could tell you all of those six things. All right, so that's very important. So do you see the importance of making sure that the corresponding parts match up? Because if I didn't, then you wouldn't know which angles are equal. You wouldn't know which segments are equal from that congruent statement. Okay, so it's very, very important that you understand that. Now look, I could, let's see if I can do this. I'm a little cramped. Let's get rid of a couple things. Okay, and let's, yeah, I'm going to group it make it a little bit easier. Now watch this. If I um, clicked on this and I hit rotate button, watch. Yep, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so if I did that, are they still congruent to each other? Yeah. yeah, they are. Now I know my letters are all upside down and stuff, but you get the idea. So looking at this, you know, these two things are marked equal to each other, so I still know that A and D are equal, don't I? This is still two arcs, this is still two arcs, so I still know that E and B. Just because I twist it around, no big deal, right? I could take it and flip it if I wanted to. This little thing flips it, um, transform, reflect, and then about the vertical, boom, it flipped it. Do you see that? See how it's kind of reversed? But still, if you can read the letters, that's F, E, and D, but it's still congruent to each other, isn't it? Look, this is still D, isn't it? Right there, because it's got one arc. You follow me on that? So it doesn't matter if it's flipped, twisted or anything else like that. Now, I can't make it bigger and make it smaller. They wouldn't be congruent anymore, would they? All right, but I can twist them and flip them and everything else, and you have to see which ones are equal to each other. You okay with that? Yes, Caitlin. Yes, you may. Take that red nurse pass. All right, so enough of that. Let's look at something else. Now, you could... They don't have to be triangles. They could be, especially in this chapter right here, they could just be congruent, um, just figures. All right, let's go that. Let's do that crazy one again. Polygons, right, a congruent polygon. What's that? Yeah, they'll tell you this. They'll tell you this stuff. Yep, they'll tell you the sides that are equal. They'll tell you the angles that are equal. Right now in this lesson, okay, a little bit later, it gets a little trickier, but for right now, as long as you know, they'll tell you the angles that are equal and the sides that are equal and all that kind of stuff. So watch. Let's say we had this one. And let's just do this very quickly. We'll call this A, B, C, D, E, F. All right? And then I just copied and pasted. It's the same exact figure, isn't it? And E, F, and we'll call this what? G, is that right? H, what? I, J, K, and L, all right? So what they're going to do is they'll do, they'll do this. They'll tell you, okay, those two are equal. These two are equal. I'm not going to do all of these, but you get the idea, don't you? And then they'll say that this is equal to this. This one is equal to this one. You okay with that? And then these are equal. I'm not going to do all the rest. It's just a waste of time, but you get the idea. So what would I call this? I could call this anything, right? It's a polygon, or how many sides is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. You could call it hexagon if you wanted to, whatever. We'll just call it polygon. You want to just make it easy? A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. Is congruent to, oops, let's do the equals first. Now, it's very important that you put it in the correct order, though, isn't it? So if I started off with this A, B, C, D, what do I have to do over here? What would I start with? I'd start off with a G, wouldn't I? Because the A is two arcs and the G is two arcs, right? So I'd have to go what? G, H, I, J, K, L. You with me on that? All right. So it's the same. It's the same deal. Um, you could take. You could have taken it and like flipped it around, like we did earlier. Um, you know, you could have taken this and gone like this. All right, but they'll still tell you what is equal to what. All right, so this, I guess that's an L, right? So this L matches up with what over here? The F. Do you see it? 
All right, so even though now they're not going to have the letters upside down like I did. I mean, they'll do them right side up, but they could take the picture and flip it around, still label it. But they'll tell you what angles are equal, what sides are equal, and all that good stuff. Make sense? All right. Um, let's do this. All right, sorry about that. We uh, didn't quite get to the whole thing. You can watch that other guy's video, though. Um, I'm 257, page 257 to 259, and we're doing numbers 13 to 20, and 28 to 30. Yep. 13 to 20 and 28 to 30, right there. Uh, you should know how to do most of those, maybe towards the end. Watch that other guy's video, and, watch, and just look at the last example in the book. You could always do that, too, couldn't you?